LinkedIn is jumping on one of the hypes in social media. LinkedIn will start with their own version of stories like we have on Instagram, like we have on Snapchat, like we have on, uh, on Facebook. Um, and some people may question why LinkedIn uh, would do this because LinkedIn is seen as a more professional channel. Uh, well, there are a number of reasons. First of all, you see more and more people that grew up with the stories mindset um, that are now entering the workforce. Uh, people that grew up with Snapchat and Instagram are now starting their professional careers and they want to share what's going on in, in the office and a format like stories is a very interesting one for that. Um, next to that, I think this could be a fantastic tool for employer branding where you motivate your employees to talk about what's happening in your office from day to day and by doing so you, you become more transparent, you give people that may want to work for you more insights in your day-to-day -day habits and I think that could be a big opportunity as well. Hey guys, welcome to Stephen's Week, your weekly update on marketing and technology. Welcome to this new episode. Stay tuned, I got more stories to come about Amazon opening really automated groceries and about Alibaba and the coronavirus and of course much more. Enjoy the rest of the show my friends. Amazon is expanding its uh, Amazon Go Stores concept. You know about Amazon uh, Go Stores. Huh? Those are the stores where you walk in, you take what you want and you walk out. They remove the checkout. It's fully automated using sensors and using AI. Um, they have now 25 of those stores and they are extremely successful. But these stores are small, convenient stores where you pick a quick lunch or a quick you know, beverage that you like. Um, but now they're expanding this to a full-size grocery store, like the size of a Walmart, of a Whole Foods, and they want to have the full offering available without the checkout. And um, this week, the first store like that opened in Seattle. And this is, again, an experiment for them to see if it still works out, if people are like loading their uh, shopping carts with, with everything they need for their, you know, their, their weekly consumption. Um, and if this becomes a success, probably in one or two years from now, we're going to see the expansion of this model to other cities as well. Google's Waimu, the driverless car division of Google, raised $2.2 billion this week. Um, this is external money. This is not Google's money. They went to VCs to get this money. And the goal is to invest more, obviously. Um, and they want to reach the level four as soon as possible. And probably the whole discussion about autonomous cars is, is not a discussion of when it will happen, but rather where it will happen. This is at least also what one of the investors, Andreessen Horowitz, is saying. It's a matter of finding the right spot and then making sure that certain cars get like level four certified. And then you can take maybe your autonomous vehicle from city one to city two. And in the meanwhile, you can relax and sleep and do whatever you can. But to reach level five, that's probably going to take another few decades. But the goal is to reach level four and to find out spots where you can actually use the autonomous driving in a safe and convenient way. Alibaba has developed an algorithm that will help doctors with the diagnosis of the coronavirus. What happens is that they made an AI, an algorithm that can look at the uh, pictures of people's lungs and then in just five seconds the algorithm can detect if people are a patient of the coronavirus or not uh, with a 96% accuracy. Just to give you an idea, if doctors have to do this by themselves, they have a lower accuracy and it takes them up to 15 minutes per patient to, to have the same kind of result. So they can speed up the process and they can also increase the accuracy, um, which is a tremendous help if you look at the amount of tests that they've been doing around the world right now. There's a new function in Alexa. Um, you can now ask for information about the 1,500 most used kinds of medication in the US. Uh, the reason why they're doing this is to reduce the amount of questions that people ask towards doctors and nurses about these kind of medications, those so popular kinds of medications. Um, and the kind of questions are usually all the same. So they listed the questions and now people can just ask it to Alexa, not disturbing doctors and nurses while they're helping patients that are in real need. So guys, this was my weekly update. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, please share the video with your friends and colleagues. Subscribe to the channel. Have a wonderful weekend and I hope to see you again next week. Bye-bye.